Fabrizio Romano has spoken and has given us his here we go to Robert Lewandowski to Barcelona. It looks like it's happening, but also Barcelona have been spending some money. Cheeky buggers. They bought in Rafinha, but they got Frank Kessie and Christiansen in on a free. Also looking to add Marcus Alonso and Cesar Azpilicueta if rumours are to believe. Now, I'm a sucker for rumours. I absolutely believe that. So in Football Manager, I have also added Marcus Alonso and Cesar Azpilicueta to Barcelona. What we're going to do is is try and recreate a 4 3 3 for Barcelona to use next season. We're going to take last year's principles and ideas, but also mix it up with some new ideas, try and bleed these new players in, and that is what this video is about. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the tactic. We're also going to play a game, a very big game against Real Madrid, but we're also going to look at the results to see how well this 4 3 3 did. So without the GB Jabba, let's get stuck in. Just a small disclaimer before we start, these tactical videos aren't necessarily just about the tactical download, they're also there to help you create your own tactic. So you don't necessarily have to download the tactic, but if you get ideas, tactical ideas from this video, then all is good. So we are going to talk about two tactical ideas from Xavi's football. We are going to be talking about the third man principle, but also wide overloads and how he uses them to create chances. The third man principle is an effective tool to progress up the pitch and find a free man in a pocket of space in an adventurous position. Using this strategy can get the ball to the attacking team's key players and also help them receive possession while facing the opposition's goal. The third man principle or concept is a tactical term that refers to the team in possession gaining access to a free target that was previously not reachable using quick interplays between three different players. In this situation we have players A, B and C with A being the initial ball carrier who's trying to find player C but cannot due to the passing channels towards him being completely shut and unavailable. So in an effort to reach the target, player A uses player B as a layoff to find player C. The ball movement will therefore go from player A to B and then finally to C, who was the primary target from the very beginning. The third man principle requires a lot of positional prowess and movement manipulation and all with a goal of achieving superiority and territory dominance. This principle is often used by the more positional coaches like Pep Guardiola of Manchester City or Marcelo Bielsa and now Xavi at Barcelona, all of whom who have popularised the tactical term itself. Now talking about overload, Xavi likes to work some wide overloads but also overload to isolate. Overloading to isolate is a tactical concept that is utilised by many coaches including the likes of Pep Guardiola with Manchester City and Ten Hag now with Manchester United. The basis of this technique is to overload one side of the pitch in order to drag the majority of the opposition to that side, thereby opening up space on the opposite side of the pitch. This graphic displays effective positioning with two players in advanced areas on the far side of the pitch. Number six is positioned deeper in the inside channel and is therefore able to receive a pass in space. This situation will ideally involve a pass from the inside channel of the overloader's side to the inside channel of the underloader's side. Once the six has received in space, they can play a pass through to the number seven, who will be isolated against the fullback. Exactly where you want your players with the ability to beat defenders 1v1 to be. This is where the isolate part comes into play. Usually when a wide player receives the ball, not only will they have the fullback to deal with, but other defenders nearby can support the fullback and create a one versus is two against a wide forward. However, the method of overloading to isolate enables attackers to get in 1v1 situations since the rest of the defenders have been moved to one side and, as a result, the distance needed to be covered to support the fullback is too great. The thing about isolation is that it mostly benefits the fast transitional teams, the ones who are quite good with the ball at their feet and the ones who have creative and technically gifted individuals who are good in direct face-to-face -face duels against their guards. The key principle of isolation is to overload the opposite side which demands a high concentration of players in the restricted area of the pitch so their teammate or teammates can have the wider space on the opposite side to exploit if the ball is directed towards them. Now before we get into the tactic, of course it's not just the incomings that have happened at Barcelona. Frankie de Jong, I mean, it's a bit baffling. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Is he going? Is he staying? I'm not exactly sure. But for this video, we he's gone. 
He's gone. He's gone to Manchester United and looking for a manager, £75 million, which is actually kind of the reported fee of real life. What's supposed to be happening in real life. But that's what's happening in this game. Frankie de Jong has left Barcelona. Now we're kind of Frankie de Jong less. Let's go to the tactics. So here we are with our 4-3-3 and I've kind of filled in our best 11. It's kind of my opinion of what this best 11 could be. But of course, I wanted to add those new signings in. Rafinha might not necessarily start every single game as a right winger. Dembele might start as a right winger. They've got a lot of players now. They can rotate. Rafinha can skip a day or two. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily have to start every game. But for Football Manager, this is what I have as my best 11. Now, what we're going to do is actually start with the player role. Sometimes you might actually want to start with the tactic instructions and setting your team play before they're moving over to the player roles. But today we're going to start with the player roles because there's some new players and we're going to see what role they can, well, playing in this Barcelona squad. So in goal, we're going to have Ter Stegen. We're going to use him as a goalkeeper or a super keeper on that supportive duty. As Jordi Alba, we're going to use him as a fullback on attack. He does like to get further forward. He still likes to get further forward. He has lost a bit of that pace, but it doesn't matter. Jordi Alba is still effective in that final third regardless. So we are going to be using a fullback on attack rather than a wingback because I just feel that the fullback does link up better than a wingback. A wingback is more individual. In defence, we we are going to be using two ball playing defenders at the back and for the right back we're going to kind of use the Danny Alves role which I feel says that Azpilicueta he can play it but play it differently Danny Alves is more technical whereas says that Azpilicueta we can kind of use him more for a defensive reason so we're going to use him as an inverted wing back and this can kind of stop us being counted Barcelona didn't do too well stopping counter attacks last season says that Azpilicueta as the right back may help if he does play that inverted role but not as a technical player but more tactically more positional thinking once we do lose the ball says Azpilicueta should be in a good position to try and stop those counter attacks so that there is our back four for our number six we are going to be using a defensive midfielder on support now you could use a deep line playmaker on support which I feel a lot of people might go for but I also feel that a deep line playmaker does have a very expansive passing range so sometimes he might get the ball and look to launch a counter attack and pass rather than just playing it simple and linking up with his teammates a defensive midfielder on support he is still going to see a lot of the ball but he's just going to be more sure in possession play those more safety percentage passes rather than those riskier passes so for that dm we are going to be using a defensive midfielder on support and then in midfield one of our number eights he's going to be a mazala attacking this left half space and then his midfield partner is going to be a central midfielder on attack now they're both fairly attacking but the central midfielder is going to focus more in making can runs off people and the Mazala is going to focus more just attacking that left half space trying to disorganize the opposition's defenses also with the central midfielder on attack he can be useful for our third man run so for an example Lewandowski might drop deep might play into Rafinha and this can set Pedri off making that third man run further forward so this is our midfield setup we've got a defensive midfield on support as our DM we've got the Mazala on the left hand side and then we've got Pedri as that right center central midfielder now again Kessie might not necessarily necessarily fit this Mazzala role he could be playing as a DM anyway as that number six and it depends if Barcelona do San Bernardo Silva some of these roles might change but that kind of looks impossible for me given their financial situation but I would have said San Rafinha is impossible and they've did that so nothing is impossible when it comes to Barcelona as our right winger we are going to be using a winger on attack someone just stretching the pitch as we've got this inverted wing back as the right back he's going to be coming inside so we do need someone on that right hand side maintaining that width but also this should help us with our wide overloads for an example says that as Pilaqueta, Pedri and Rafinha can kind of combine on that right hand side to create an overload a three versus two hopefully on the left hand side we've got Jordi Alba linking up nicely with the Mazala and of course our left winger our left winger will be an inside forward on support the difference between the inside forward and the inverted winger the inverted winger is going to kind of come in this attacking midfield area to try and create whereas the inside forward he's going to be a little bit more direct with his runs and go towards that box now the reason why I'm using the inverted forward rather than the inverted winger is because Lewandowski 
Lewandowski is going to be playing a supportive role as a pressing forward on support. Now, this hair is our player role. I do feel Lewandowski in real life as well is well suited to this pressing forward on support. He can hold up the play. He's going to close down more and tackle hard. He's going to work hard. But of course, he is going to score goals and link up well with the players around him. And that is going to be his main duty. Score goals and link up well with the players around him. I know a pressing forward's main job is to work hard off the ball, but we are Barcelona majority of time we are going to be on the ball so there's not going to be much pressing Lewandowski has to do but instead he is going to be holding up the ball and working hard just generally for the team so this here is our player roles all set and completed now we can move over to the team instructions Now, team instructions is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. For the team mentality, we are going to be using that positive mentality. Attacking width, we're just going to leave that. We're not going to play with that, but we are going to be playing out from the defence. But also, to help us create those wide overloads, we are also going to focus play down the left and focus play down the right. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to turn us into a wing play team. It just means that is the area we're going to focus a lot of our attacks. Now, we can start out in those wider areas just as long as we move the ball into the middle and concentrate on scoring or creating a very good scoring opportunity so so we are going to be focusing on down the left and focus down the right for the passing directness this is going to be set to shorter so we're just going to be focused on keeping possession a little bit more and then in the final third we're going to be sending in low crosses and working the ball into the box and this here is all set for in possession now for transition in transition when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press of course we want to be that proactive team so we want to win the ball as soon after losing it when possession has been won we are going to leave this blank now this might be the third video in the row that we're just going to be leaving this blank and i feel this is actually fairly effective in football manager now for me this is only effective if your attack and play is all sorted we are scoring a very nice amount with counter and we are also scoring a very nice amount of goals without counter so for me using counter isn't isn't a necessary but what it does do is also help us not being counted on the break so when we do lose the ball higher up the pitch and because we haven't thrown a bunch of players further forward we should have some players well we should have a good rest defense players being able to stop the opponent's counter attacks when the goalkeeper is in possession he is going to look to distribute the ball to the full backs or the center backs and by doing so he's going to be taking short kicks Finally, out of possession for the defensive line, we're going to set this higher for the land of engagement, set this higher, use the offside trap, more often trigger press and prevent that short goalkeeper distribution. But also what I feel works nicely with this tactic is using tight marking. Be closer to your opponents, but also Xavi's pressing last season at Barcelona was fairly impressive. So that is one reason or well, another reason why we're using tighter marking. And the first reason that we're using tighter marking is because it worked very, very well with this tactic. And that hair or this hair is all the player roles and the tactic all sorted out. But for those minor, minor details, we do have to look at some of the player instructions. So for the player roles in goal, Ter Stegen, he doesn't have any because he doesn't need any. For Jordi Alba, he's going to be crossing from the byline, sitting more narrow, tackling harder and marking tighter. Now, tackling harder and marking tighter is going to be on well, virtually every single player here. Again, it's something that I just felt works nice with it on yeah that's the reason why i have it on in central defense both central defenders are going to be passing it short are staying wider and easing off their tackles whilst the right back has tackle harder and mark it tighter in dm our number six he's just going to be tackling harder that is the only instruction that he has frank kessie will be taking more so the mazala on support is going to be taking more risk and the central midfielder on attack is also going to be taking more risks but also moving into those channels out on the flanks for the left winger inside forward on support he's going to be staying wider tackling harder and marking tighter and Rafinha is also going to be stretching play because he's a winger but he's also going to be shooting less often tackling harder and marking tighter lastly up top Robert Lewandowski just moving into those channels causing some disruption for the opposition's defense and that there my friends is the tactic all wrapped up that is everything you need to know for my shavi 433 22 23 so like i said earlier it's kind of their principles that were set last season but also what i feel barcelona can improve in the areas that i feel they can improve in and yeah that there 
is the football tactic all wrapped up now it's time to look at those results and play that actually so yeah sorry sorry that's all gibberish all gibberish what we're going to do is look at the results first and then lastly sign off with that game against real madrid at camp new So we won't spend too much time on the results part, but as you can see in the La Liga, Real Madrid with 105 points and the goal difference on 110. I mean, the team that came second, which is Real Madrid, didn't even come close. We finished 25 points ahead of them. But in the Champions League, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals, losing 4-1 on aggregate. We lost 4-0 at Bayern Munich's ground and that knocked us out in the Copa del Rey. We also well, we won that actually. We won that 6-0 in the final, but we got knocked out in the semi-final in the Super Copa. We got knocked out by Real Madrid. So we didn't quite complete all four trophies, but walking out with a double, the La Liga and the Spanish Cup is all good news for Barcelona. Now looking at some of the stats, you can see that we scored the most goals, 130 goals scored. We had the most shots for, the fewest shots against. Now looking at the most possession, I don't know why every single time I play this, Raul Betis tops this table tops with the average possession and so of ego as well those two teams usually do very very well in football manager in possession but barcelona coming in fourth place with 56 percent which is fairly respectable now looking at the most tackles one no nah, we're not there most dribbles made not there again but for the most clean sheets there is barcelona with 21 and for the fewest conceded barcelona with 20 now for the most goals here is Lewandowski, the absolute cheat code in 22 starts he managed to score 34 goals and no other barcelona player in the top eight Dembele with 13 assists the pie with 12 pedri with 11 nice robert Lewandowski with the most shots four for the most man of the match i mean you guessed it for the most key passes piaznik is in this list despite only playing how many games 11 starts he's only got 11 starts but he finds his way on that list for the past completion nobody's there most tackles one says that as Pilaqueta on top of that list so it actually worked i told you guys he could play that role but maybe not as a technical player but positionally wise he could be making a lot of tackles and this is exactly what's happened here as well most dribbles made nobody's there most clean sheets to stegen on top of that list and for the viewers conceded to stegen comes in fourth so now we have moved over to the data hub you can see the past map and we can kind of compare this with the real life or the in real life one as well it looks very very nice but what is <laughs> shocking for me in this last game against atletico pamplona is our dm the amount of passes that he's played to Lewandowski is very very high but it's nice to see us we working some wide overloads here on the left hand side but also out here on the right hand side it kind of leaves us open in the middle but it worked against Pamplona. Now looking at the attacking efficiency, aggressive shooting and clinical for Barcelona. Defensively, we were quiet and impenetrable. Of course we were for the possession wise. We frequently won the ball, but we were also reliable in possession. So off the ball, we done well. On the ball, we done very, very well as well. And now looking at the pass, we made a lot of passes, but we were also fairly accurate and that there is the results all the important results that you need to know we can see the top goal scorer in the squad but that's not really important Lewandowski scoring 38 goals of course and for the most assists Memphis Depay with 17 Dembele has 15 and Pedri has 12 but now it's time to go into that all important game against Real Madrid the El Clasico let's go So here we are for the El Clasico. I mean, the best thing, the best thing about this game is that it's the first game of the season. We actually haven't played. So a lot of these players are going to be making a debut. So this actually might be a sticky game for us. Even the friendlies didn't even go too well. I mean, we lost to West Ham and this guy Diggy scored in the 94th minute. Are oh, you guys can't even see Solky, Solky. But now let's go into this game. Let's select this team and play Real Madrid. So we're in the dressing room now and we're going to try and pump up these boys. Let's just ask the assistant and then we're going to, yeah, just, yeah, just go and make the difference, boys. Go and make the difference and let's get stuck in. Here's Dembele running through, finds Lewandowski. I mean, it's 22 seconds on the board. Oh, oh, oh what is going on? We've almost gone one nil up. I mean, I wasn't even talking because I didn't think it was a highlight. And then boom, almost one nil up. And there's a free kick for Real Madrid. I mean, early warning signs for Real Madrid. They clearly haven't woken up. And here is a Barcelona free kick. This camera view is a bit strange. It is, but I'm, I might just keep it because Piaznik is now on a free kick. And he's hit the bar. We're going to keep this camera view because it's 
giving us good luck, obviously. Here's Ter Stegen. I mean, it's four minutes in and we've already got our third highlight. We've already hit the bar. The goalkeeper's made a fantastic save and they almost got a known goal. So, I mean, this should tell us this is going in. Here's Rafinha. The new oh, he just dribbles past him. Rafinha, he's down the byline. Piaznik, Lewandowski, Dembele. I told you. I told you. This means that we are scoring right now. Yeah, you thought I was going to see. I'm not going to see because it is Dembele. I mean, Ronaldo could possibly sue us. <laughs> Get it? But here's Piaznik on the ball. Lewandowski sets off to Dembele. And there we are. Nice link up play for Lewandowski. Exactly what we want. And it is 1-0 to Barca already. 1-0 to the Barcelona. 1-0. Uh oh. Oh, here's Kessie on the ball now. Rafinha. He's holding it up. He's looking for some footballers. Here's Cesar as Pilaqueta plays up. What a ball, Cesar. Here's Dembele now. Puts it back into the box. Lewandowski is a header, but that is. It's in the edge of the box. It's very unlikely he was going to score that. Here's Cesar as Pilaqueta. Piaznik now. He's going to play it into Sergio. It's a nice little pause there. Nice little pause. I thought he was going to play it to Christiansen, but here's Kessie now. Jordi Alba, Lewandowski. <laughs> He's offside. Now, possibly, um, possibly on the wing back, Jordi Alba would have got that ball and just dribbled with it rather than trying to link up. And he finds Lewandowski, but Lewandowski's run was too soon. Here's Christiansen now on the ball. The debutants are playing. There's a lot of debutants. The whole team is basically debutants. Here's Lewandowski. Oh, oh no. Rafinha's going to have to come off at half time as well. Here's Hazard. There's Benzi. Oh, Benzi should have scored that. Benzi should have scored that. But it is half time, and that was literally Real Madrid's only shot off the half. I mean, I'm not liking the possession numbers, but it is what it is, and we are 1 0 up. So we can look at some of the in game stuff in possession. This is what we look like. Here's our heat map, but here's Courtois on the ball. Rudiger, Militao. What a signing that is for Real Madrid, by the way, Rudiger. Here's Militao again. Natural. I don't feel, I think Real Madrid are going to struggle to get out of here unless they hoof it. Hoof it. There we are. And we collect the ball. Here's Christiansen now. Brings the ball forward. Piaget to Luva. Here's Kessie. Here's Kessie. Uh-oh. Kessie. Come on, boys. Come on. That was deserved. I really wanted to score that second goal as well because, I mean, that Benzema highlight kind of worried me. It kind of worried my head. Frank Kessie. He's just, I don't know where the goalkeeper was going. And it is two goes. To the nil. They've shown another highlight here. I don't think they need to. It was... Oh, come on, ref. Man, he's, he's the three guys playing him on. Literally. Yikes. So, let's go back to the heat map. And this is our heat map. I mean, you can see how deep Real Madrid are playing. Oh, we've got a corner here. Piaznik. And it is now 3-0. Andreas Christensen on his debut. I mean, I do have a corner routine. And it is to go to the near post. That clearly was not the near post. Piaznik just whips it all the way to the far post. He beats Kamavinga in the I don't think Kamavinga even jumped. And it is now three goals to the nil. And it's Barcelona in the El Clasico. And this is where here you can see us just absolutely smashing Real Madrid to pieces. And they are the second best team in the league. So you can only imagine what it does to some of the other teams in this. Oh, look at the football. Here's Demby. Here's Demby. Oh, Quata. Lewandowski is getting a bit knackered now. He's on an 8.2, but we're just going to keep it rolling. We're in the 90th minute now. Come on, one more. We want one more. Oh, oh, oh. Have they heard me? Kessie, I could be the greatest manager on earth. Kessie? Kess? Oh, my days. This is happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's four goals to the zero. I said we won four. I looked at the time. There's only three minutes. But I told you when it comes to Barcelona, nothing is impossible. I told you, Kessie. I mean, he just smashed. He walloped that. I feel sorry for Quarta. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He is a good guy. And that there wraps up the end of the game. It is Barcelona 4, Real Madrid 0. Despite Quarta playing a 7.1, we are 24 shots at goal, 10 on target, XG of 2.34. For the possession, let's not talk about that. But we can actually... No, 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 no. Let's talk about it. Oh, okay, so yeah. So they actually attempted more passes, but with 91%. And yeah, we still... Yeah, okay. 
So we were on 91% as well, but we still completed or attempted 670 passes, which is a lot. And I believe, I'm sure, I am sure that a lot of dead and passes is just between defenders as well, which racks up a lot of possession numbers. But unfortunately, that wraps up this video. This video was a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. And I hope it helps you guys create your own tactic because I will say that is the main part of my videos to help people create tactics, not necessarily telling you to download mine you can download mine but you can just tweak it as well you can do whatever you guys like whatever helps you play football manager to the best of your ability it doesn't really matter but i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have don't forget to smash that subscribe button like this video also leave a comment that would be hugely appreciated but it also helps the channel out i will see you guys soon shout out to my patreon stay safe stay blessed love you all goodbye